All right, so the first thing I'm gonna tell you guys is that this is not the camera that you get because you want the highest resolution or you want some super cinematic or clinical image. No, 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 no. You get this little guy because it's super small, easy, and convenient to use. You know, so they say that the best camera is always the one that you've got on you. And I absolutely believe in that. And over the years of making content, I've always wanted the bigger, badder camera, right? Just so that you can get that good old blurry background, right? Is it all bokeyed out right now? But does that really matter? Probably not, because the truth is, what's more important than this blurry background is the story, the content itself, the action. See, this, this is not convenient to always have on you. This on the other hand, I mean, this is nice and small and when it's in its charging case, I mean like this is basically the size of AirPods. If you can keep AirPods on you, you can keep this on you. And if you can keep this on you, then you're always ready to capture life's moments. But what excites me even more than using this like an action cam is using this for FPV. So we're gonna spend some time around that specific application, but don't worry, if you're interested in this camera beyond FPV, stick around because I still do talk about this from a more general content creator perspective. And don't skip ahead, it messes up my analytics. So this is coming in at 26.6 grams, which means this will be friendly to even some of these smaller drones, which is always a good thing. And when you compare this, to a Hero 9, I mean, that is enough of a difference to make your five inch standard drones even feel that much better. I'm talking better agility, longer flight times, and probably my favorite thing of all, less breaking things. All right, so far, this camera is checking off all the boxes, right? But none of that really matters if the image quality sucks. So, you guys be the judge for yourself. This is the image directly out of the GoTo camera, and if you ask me, it's pretty damn good. And the audio, this is the audio directly out of the camera, which in my opinion is a huge improvement over the original Go, which really sounded very tinny. And it's also almost very distracting from the video itself, but this right here, absolutely acceptable. So, question is, how does it look with FPV? So overall, I think this looks really good. Definitely better than what I expected and absolutely plenty for something like YouTube. And even though I shot this during that golden hour, that spot I was flying at is definitely challenging for a camera, given the different lighting conditions. I mean, some spots are very bright, while others are super dark, especially when I drop into the shadows. And I think this is an important thing to show, especially for my FPV people, because this is about the worst case scenario you can put an FPV freestyle drone in. And as you can see, it handles the lighting changes quite nicely. I do want to point out that this is with no stabilization at all. So what you're seeing is the best possible resolution without any cropping of any kind. Now, of course, given that it has a smaller sensor, I'm not expecting a whole lot once you start to lose light. But even here, when the sun has gone down below the horizon, I think that the image quality is still more than acceptable. Now, if you're wondering about stabilization, I'm going to say that if you are going to use this for freestyle, where you've got the more aggressive and acrobatic flight maneuvers, I'm gonna say not to use it, actually, which might surprise some of you guys. And, and here's why. In my experience, I think the gyro data gets read wrong sometimes, and so then it introduces these weird jolts and wobbles that you don't see when you don't apply stabilization. It might just be the way that I've got it mounted, so let me, let me show you guys that. So here's the way I've got it mounted, and it's a little bit up higher, so I can see how possibly maybe my mount's just a little loose and therefore, oh look at that, I accidentally hit it. By the way, that's probably one of the things that I don't like about this is it's so easy to accidentally hit that button and start recording. 
But anyways. Hey, Tommy the editor, uh, jump in here real quick to update that whole scenario. I reached out to, to Insta360 and let them know that I'm seeing some weird wobbles and jolts when I'm using the FPV stabilization, which used to work really well on the first one. So they sent me out some firmware to try out because they're actively working on it. So I wanted to call that out just to show this is how awesome Insta360 is. However, I have not been able to test this new firmware out yet because I'm actually on the road on a shoot, but I, I will update you guys at a later point in time. Maybe I'll make another video if that got any better. Now, back to the original video. It might just be the way I got it mounted, guys, so just take it with a grain of salt, but I've found that for freestyle acrobatic type of videos, don't use the stabilization. Just go straight raw, and I think it looks better that way. Now, here's what I will say. I mean, you guys might be like, yo, what the heck? flow state stabilization that's kind of a waste now if you're going to shoot cinematic style type of flying where you're being smooth and you want to have that extra layer of stabilization to look, make it look buttery for that it works absolutely great just make sure that you've got it on a drone that's pretty clean in terms of vibration and noise and things like that and you'll have some great results which by the way if you just a little bit of a tip if you are planning to use this for cinematic purposes and want to use flow state stabilization you want to make sure that you got it placed somewhere where you don't have props in view and you can't just rely on checking the viewfinder to make sure that you don't got props in view because right now the way i've got it mounted with this angle there is no props in view but once you apply that flow state stabilization if the prop is close enough to the super wide angle field of view that this thing has your props will show up all right now of course, I can't talk about this go-to camera without talking about 3PV. I'm talking about third-person view because I feel like it's a fresh way to share drone flight videos. And it's a type of video that is easier to watch for non-FPV people. It tends to be the video that they don't really get as dizzy with. And it's just a fresh perspective being able to see the drone. Uh, so I wanna share with you guys how I'm doing it. Basically, here's my 250. I created an arm. You want this arm to be nice and rigid. In my opinion, I think it looks best when you can have the camera as far back as possible so that you can see more of the drone in the shot. And when you're doing this, I highly recommend that you use the horizon lock mode because I think that's what gives it more of that video game look. But basically this is how I've got this going on my 250 frame. So if you're using this for FPV, I think the next logical question here is what's up with the lens? Because on the original Go, it wasn't a replaceable lens and if you crashed it, well, you're pretty much done. Well, Insta360 is listening because this right here, you take this guy, it screws right off and boom, you got replaceable lenses, but not only that, Insta360 is also making some ND filters that you can screw on just like so, just in case you wanted to introduce some motion blur into your clips. I think we could pretty much agree, I think we could pretty much agree that this guy is a pretty good FPV camera. Let's talk about specs, even though I don't normally like to talk about specs, but because the fact that this does not have a removable battery, it doesn't have a micro SD card slot, you should be aware of its limitations. So first things first, it holds 32 gigabytes, but of the 32 gigabytes that's on here, only 28 is usable. And that works out to about 47 minutes of video footage, shooting in the highest resolution at 30 frames per second in pro video mode. And that's the, the mode that you wanna be in because that's what gives you the most flexibility in post. And as far as battery life goes, the camera itself, you only get 30 minutes, which is not a whole lot. So if you're using this for FPV, I recommend that you take it out and you put it into the charging case when you are not using it and or if you're trying to transfer some of the footage out of the camera to free up some space because when you use it with the charging case, now you've got 150 minutes. So that's 150 minutes of whether you're using it in the case, you know, kind of like this or 150 minutes in total when you take it out, go fly, put it back in here and charge it. And the other cool thing is, is that it does time lapse. It does this thing called time shift. It does HDR video. It does a whole lot of things, but it's not just the fact that it's got a bunch of features or the fact that it's so small and easy to keep on you that makes this easy to use. It's the fact that 
Insta360 has really focused on making the workflow super simple. For instance, right now I just took this out of my pocket on my bike and started to hit the record button. I didn't have to sit here and think about how I want this to look or where I'm gonna post it so that I can make some decisions about what settings I need to change before I hit the record button. I mean, by then, the moment may have passed. But with this, you just gotta remember to hit that record button. Because you can actually do all of those changes after the fact. I mean, you can sit here and you can change the field of view. Maybe you wanna put something for TikTok. Maybe you want to make something for Instagram. You can even change their field of view. So right now we got something narrow, but let's say I want to make it a wide shot. You can do that. You can also do things like decide if you want to turn the flow state stabilization off. Maybe you, you don't want the horizon lock, up to you. You can even make things like exposure settings. So you make things brighter, darker, you can change the saturation, change the highlights, the shadows, to make all the decisions that you want after the fact. And it's really that simple because from there, it's already on your phone, you can just send it straight off to social media. Or if you're like me, you might wanna pull it down to your computer so that you can edit it into something like Final Cut. Just know that you have that option too. Or if you don't like to edit, don't wanna learn how to edit, then just use their built-in flash cut AI editor. That's right, it will make edits for you. If that's your thing. Woo, it is windy today. All right, hopefully you guys can hear me, but I also gotta talk about this charging case because probably one of the best new features is that this is not just a charging case anymore. First of all, if you open it up and look closely, it's got an LCD screen. It's basically a wireless controller. So you can start, stop, record here, and you can change some of the settings all from here without having to connect to your phone. The other cool thing is, it's got a cord 20. So you can connect this to a selfie stick if you didn't want to just use this as your own selfie stick as it is. But here's one last cool little thing about it. On the back, it's got these tiny little legs so that it can sit there and be a little tripod. So if I was out walking around like this, I'd feel pretty self-conscious. Or even like this, with the GoPro chest harness, I'd feel pretty uncomfortable. It's, it's, I just feel like people are looking at me because I'm wearing a bra with a bolt on. But when the camera's this small, I don't even think twice about being self-conscious. I mean, even when you put it into its charging case and use it that way, I really don't feel like I'm drawing a whole lot of attention to myself. Besides, if somebody asked what that is, just powdering my nose. All right, so if you are planning to pick up this camera, I've got a couple of quick tips for you. First and foremost, be sure to turn off the shot on watermark that is on by default, and I'm pretty sure you're not gonna wanna see that Insta360 watermark logo in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Tip number two is to always shoot in pro video mode. It's the one that'll get you up and going the quickest, it has the best image quality, and gives you the most flexibility in post. The third is that if you are using this for FPV cinematic purposes, be sure to do a test on where you mount the camera because again, just because it doesn't show props in view on the camera view, doesn't mean that props won't show up if you do apply something like flow state stabilization. The last tip is to be patient with it uh, because I have personally ran into a couple of scenarios where the app just kind of hung up on itself and things just froze. If that happens, just hold the, uh, the button on the camera for six seconds, that will reset things. And uh, have a little faith that Insta360 will come out with some firmware updates that will make things a lot smoother. At least that was my experience with other Insta360 cameras in the past. So I've got high hopes that they'll fix that. All right, so now that we've got that all out of the way, let's finally talk about the price. Oh, it's getting warm in here. So this little bundle, and I think it only comes with the, the one bundle, is $299 and it gives you everything that you can possibly need to get started with creating content. So basically, in addition to the camera, you're getting a battery bank, something that other camera brands don't include. You're getting a wireless controller, which with the other camera brand, you have to pay extra for. You get the horizon lock feature, which 
with other brands, you have to buy the an optional max lens mod, and then you have to remember to turn it on before you even hit the record button. With this, it's just built in. Decide after the fact, you can put it on or off, depending on whether or not you think it looks good. You also get all of the mounting accessories, the, the thing that you can mount it to a wall if you want, and all of the wearable accessories, the, the magnetic pendant, which is actually this guy right here. I, I don't think I remembered to show that. So this is something that you wear really easy, put underneath, just sticks on, you get the, the hat clip. If you're planning to use this as just an FPV camera, I think, I think it's worth it. Do I think the GoPro image looks better? Yeah, I think the GoPro image has the edge in terms of image quality. But at the same time, I don't think it really matters when at the end of the day, you're gonna be posting this up to social media, which is primarily consumed on a phone. I really don't think that you'd be able to tell the difference between a GoPro image and this Insta360 Go 2 image when you're watching it on say a phone or a tablet. You know, if you are planning to use this beyond FPV, like let's say you're planning to use this to maybe you wanna vlog or use it as an action cam, record time lapses of you building your FPV drone, then I feel that this has huge value at $299. The last thing I wanna say here is a shout out to Insta360 for really embracing the FPV community. I think the fact that they even named one of their stabilization modes FPV mode kind of says it all. And that's something that I can't really say the same for the other camera brands, right? Because look what happened to Proteins. I really like the, uh, the direction that Insta360 is going with their technology, and I really hope that they continue to listen and embrace our community, the FPV community, because we absolutely need better and smaller cameras, especially with the upcoming regulations coming on. So I really think this is gonna be a really good option. All right, that's gonna wrap up today's video. If I did help you make a decision today, please consider using my affiliate link down in the description below. That helps me out a little bit because I actually don't get paid to make these videos. And if you decide that this is not for you and you still wanna support me anyways, all good. Just hit that like button and maybe watch a couple of my other videos. All right, that's gonna do it. And I will see y'all on the next one. Peace out. Thank you.